Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, March 22nd, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Password encrypted malware is apparently back again. Now, in this case, it's a Word document. It is encrypted using Word's own built in encryption scheme. The password that is required to decrypt the document is included in the email. Now, this is nothing new and there have been some anti-malware tools that scanned the text of emails for passwords in order to decrypt uh, these emails. Now, not sure how effective this is in this particular case. Of course, if you just have the attachment, then you will have a hard time analyzing it. And if you just upload the attachment itself to virus total for example you won't get any hits because each email is encrypted using an individual password now once you decrypt this particular word document then you'll end up with the typical javascript downloaders that will attempt to download various additional malware of course, to a user who isn't familiar with this particular technique, a password encrypted file may actually appear more trustworthy because apparently it is secure by being encrypted with a password. And Password Wallet LastPass fixed a rather serious vulnerability in its Chrome extension due to a bug in the JavaScript that was delivered with this Chrome extension. It was possible for an attacker to not only have direct access to the internal API for LastPass, which essentially provides access to usernames and passwords, but also to execute arbitrary commands on on the host system. As an example, Project Zero has released a little proof of concept that will start the calculator on your Windows system. This, however, will potentially also affect other operating systems, not just Windows. Now, LastPass fixed this particular problem. However, in the bug report for this problem, there is a note that there is another vulnerability that affects Firefox that is not fixed right now. This particular bug has not made public, so not really clear what the extent and the effect of that second vulnerability is all about. In this particular case, LastPass also removed the particular host name that has to be used in order to trigger this vulnerability. Now, while this isn't sufficient to actually fix the vulnerability, it may protect you to some extent even if you aren't up to date on the latest and greatest version of LastPass. But still watch for updates and apply them as soon as possible. And Google's Nest security cameras are suffering from a rather interesting Bluetooth vulnerability that can be used to disable these cameras. Now, I don't have one of these cameras to play with here, but apparently you're using Bluetooth to actually set them up. Once set up, the camera uses Wi-Fi to send images and the like, but Bluetooth remains enabled and it is possible for an attacker to connect and send commands to that particular Wi-Fi camera. There are really three different vulnerabilities. The first two are buffer overflows. First in the SSID parameter where you advertise a short length but then actually send a longer parameter than you advertise. The second one in setting the encrypted password for the camera. The third one is almost an extension of the first one where when you reset the SSID via Bluetooth, you just provide an invalid SSID. This will, of course, disable the camera for a time it will try to connect to this non-existing SSID but then eventually fall back to the last known good SSID. Now I think the real problem here is that it's at all possible to connect via Bluetooth and change configurations apparently without authentication to these cameras. That's of course really a fundamental issue. But then again, whenever you're dealing with wireless devices like this, there's always a denial of service possibility. All it takes is just overpowering the Wi-Fi spectrum. 
These cameras are in particular vulnerable to these kinds of attacks because first of all, they do not have a wired connection that you could use. And secondly, they don't have any local storage on the device itself. So if the camera is disconnected from Wi-Fi, it will not be able to record any images. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.